Hey, this is John Tennant coming to you again with another video about synesthesia and some of the cool things that you can do with it. In this video, I wanted to see if I could take a, a single visual effect and design a single sound for it, but then bounce out separate components of that sound and use it to drive individual components of the visual effect. Um, so I'll show you what I got going on here, and then I'll do my best to break it down for you. Here we go. So what's going on here is there's two main things. There's the lightning and the ball. And the lightning's being driven by the thunder sound that's in the sound effect. And the ball is being driven by the like sine wave based dive thing. But it's just a single sound effect that's playing. I'm just using two different NRT files to drive the visual effects. So I'll show you what I'm doing here. So when I import my sounds um, into Unreal, I've got the the main thunder, like swoosh, the full the full thing here, which basically sounds like this. It's got more than just thunder, and it's got swoosh and some lightning and stuff. And then I've also imported just the thunder. And I've also imported just the sine wave. And what I've done is I've made some NRT files with the sine wave and some NRT files with just the thunder. And so when I play these sounds here, I'm directing the blueprint script to these tables and I'm doing a lookup and I'm saying, okay, so if you're playing this wave here, I want you to use this NRT file with this wave. Um, and there's another way that you can do this too directly on the NRT file itself, but uh, I wanted to do it more than once. So the table seemed like the better way to go. So that's the sine wave table. This is the thunder table there and there. And what it looks like in the blueprint script is, uh, is like this. So we look we look up the tables based on the uh, the wave file it's playing. So you, this nice little event here will tell us what what wave file is being played. And we get the object name and go to the row name, and that just looks up the table that I just showed you here, and it directs it to the correct NRT file. And I'm doing that once for the thunder sound, wave to thunder, and once for the wave, or for the sine wave sound, wave to sine. And I'm storing both those as variables. This just happens once, the beginning of the file being played and doesn't happen again. And that's with the do once there. Then on the tick, as, this, as it updates, we're getting the values out of the loudness files right here, and we're using them to set variables, thunder loudness, sign loudness. And we're driving the, uh, the size of the, the ball in Cascade. I'm using Cascade for this demo. And then we're using the thunder sound to drive the velocity of the sparks and the size of the sparks. So I'll show you what that looks like again here. So what's cool about this is you can have sound effects that are slightly different and the visual effects stay completely synced to it. So you can sequence your sound effects slightly differently each time and it's still obviously the same effect, but 
kind of cool because it remains t so tightly synced. And what that looks like in the, if anyone's interested, what it looks like in the uh, cascade file. And this is a whole world that I'm not really super familiar with, but sort of blundering my way along here. So here's the, uh, here's where I'm setting it as a drivable parameter. I'm naming my parameter size. That's scaling the size of the ball, which you can't see because it's super tiny. It actually needs the sine wave to make it bigger. Same with those blue sparks. They need the, the thunder to make them bigger. So that's the, that's what will make it bigger. And then over here in the blueprint, got size. And then there's another ball. So I have to drive the size of that too with a different parameter. And same thing with sparks velocity and spark size. Oh yeah, there's one last thing going on here. I'm just watching the thunder loudness for a, for a threshold here. And when it hits a threshold, I'm playing a sequence of, uh, playing a sequence of kind of lightning spark sound effects. And I'll just show you what that looks like because it's kind of neat. So when it hits a threshold, it's playing those kind of swooshy little whiz by sounds. And that's pretty much it for this demo. If you got any questions, post them in the comments. Be super stoked to answer. Until the next one, stay safe, wear a mask.